The NFL today, as part of its billion-dollar settlement of a class action lawsuit over concussions, is promising to end a practice called race norming, whereby cognitive test scores of black players assume a lower level of function. From the Washington Post report on this, quote, the use of race norms in the NFL's concussion settlement payouts first came to light last August when two former players accused the league in a lawsuit of discriminating against hundreds and potentially thousands of former black players. In their suit, former players Najee Davenport and Keevan Henry alleged that race norming prevented them from getting settlement payouts. In Davenport's case, he claimed that a doctor initially diagnosed him with dementia, but the NFL appealed and demanded his test scores get curved using race norm data, which resulted in a reversal of the diagnosis. Joining us now is Kevin Blackestone, panelist on ESPN's Around the Horn, visiting professor at the Philip Merrill College of Journalism at the University of Maryland and sports commentary columnist for The Washington Post. Was this really first brought to light in August? Um, yeah, sadly, through this lawsuit. Um, and, you know, what's so ironic about it, right, is that this is the same time when uh, the National Football League and Roger Goodell are trying to embrace the Black Lives Matter movement and talk about how much they care about um, black athletes. Uh, yet, on the backside, um, they were engaged in, in this lawsuit and, and trying to appeal it um, and standing up for such a such a horrible racist analysis um, that it just it just boggles the mind. You know, when I, you think about sport and and we have told people um, wrongly that sport has been in the vanguard of social change in this country um, and that, you know, we love to point to the the idea of, of Jackie Robinson um, and and in doing so, we whitewash the true history of sport and race in this country, um, which is uh, segregation and discrimination. Um, and then when you see this this complaint, this lawsuit, and how the NFL um, stood to appeal it, um, y you realize just how, what a racist policy this is, right? To deny health benefits to the people who make your game um, the great game that it is to people who lay their lives out um, to, to play this sport and have turned so many people in the sport other than themselves into millionaires many times over and have turned this sport into the largest sport on the planet Earth, a, you know, a, a $20 billion um, corporation. It's really, um, it, it's really uh, disgusting. And I should also point out that the other thing I learned from, from reading about this, and much of this I learned from um, Lucia Trimbor, who's a, a professor at, at CUNY up in New York, who has studied this, is that this is really pernicious, that we are focusing on this race norming idea today as something that um, affects black football players. But this is something that is used in the medical profession um, in a lot of different ways, which affects people of color, black people in particular, when it comes to getting uh, medical treatment at the same uh, level um, as as their white peers, so this is a really really problematic. This is this is on the eugenics level, Nicole. This is crazy. So so, yeah, so look, this story crossed our radar. It's, it's not traditionally the kind of story we would cover. But if you're going to have a conversation about systemic racism in America, um, this story seems to, as you just articulated, intersect between mistreatment of black athletes specifically and strategically and racism in, in medicine. And I just want to, because I read a lot about this today, too, I want to read a little bit more about how this worked. In its use of race norming, the league compares a given player's cognitive test scores with the supposed norm for his demographic group. Under the methodology, black players are assumed to possess a lower level of cognitive function than the average white player. Now, attorneys got involved and said that the standard means that in order to qualify for compensation, the average black player had to demonstrate greater levels of cognitive decline than a white counterpart. How is that not just, you know, straight up rigging it against, I mean, if, if they're saying that a black athlete starts at a lower level, obviously any damage from a concussion would be harder to detect in the kind of tests used to give out money. Was this 
about money or was this about that nasty intersection of racism and money? You know, I think it's about both. Um, on the one hand, it's about money because it comes from this concussion lawsuit. And the NFL is trying to pay out as little as possible when it comes to this concussion lawsuit and, and the, or the settlements that they're, that they're making. But in another sense, right, it harkens back to a very ugly yesterday, um, a time when uh, assumptions were made about the intellectual and cognitive abilities of the progeny of enslaved Africans in this country. Um, you think back to the turn of the 19th century and how um, Jack Johnson, who was the first black man allowed to fight for the heavyweight championship, was um, portrayed in media in this country and and abroad, um, and how he was um, uh, uh, how he was um, described as as being some someone or something less than human, and, and this is a new construct, right? Because this this um, this fight in this lawsuit and this race norming idea uh, may not have been around 20 years ago. This is something new when it comes to 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 uh, the concussion lawsuits and the concussion settlements. So it is it is both, and it is extremely um, uh, troubling. And there is th this is something that the NFL um, a, an apology, which it really is not made yet, is not nearly not nearly enough. This is something you talk about reparations. Uh, th this is something that's going to require reparations in, in order for the NFL to to clean it up. And they have one of the worst records in terms of diversity in um, head coaches. I believe, what, 29 of the 32 head coaches are white men. I want to play something I saw um, on Real Sports with Brent Gumbel. It's an interview with Coach Mike Tomlin. It is a global collective failure from, from my perspective. Mike Tomlin has won more games than any black head coach in NFL history. You've been in the room at the owners' meetings when this is discussed. I know you hear the right things, but as African Americans, all of us are used to hearing stuff and knowing when we hear it. You know, I, I don't know if it is at the time, but I know that the results are, you know. So I guess, Kevin, my question is, how, how does that conversation change in light of what was a um, overtly and strategically racist policy around concussions. It highlights it in the brightest yellow highlighter that you can find. Um, because now if you want to talk yeah. about why hiring has not been um, equitable, why uh, black men who play this game um, have not gotten an equal opportunity, um, you can look at this. And this explains it. This suggests that there are people who run this league um, not suggest, but it underscores that there are people who run this league who do not value um, black men in the same way that they do white men, same way that they do the people that they, they see in the mirror every, every morning. Um, and that is really, really um, uh, uh, problematic. And, and what's even more uh, concerning about this is that um, this is something that, that people have suggested goes on in corporate America anyway. This is, this is this is something we have to fight in this country anyway. And here it is laid bare for you um, in, in this particular instance. 